What will a voice to parliament look like? How will a voice to parliament work? Now, amazingly, the Prime Minister, Mr Albanese, says he isn't going to release the details until after the referendum. After. Now, how ridiculous is that, ladies and gentlemen? He just wants Australians to trust him. Trust him with the very building blocks of our nation. Now, the Prime Minister wants us to give him a blank cheque to alter our constitution forever. And he refuses to provide us any detail whatsoever. Now, luckily, we don't need the details to know that the voice is a bad idea. Any reasonable, sensible person understands that dividing our great multicultural nation by race is not only a bad idea, it is the very description of racism. After all, what a great man once said many years ago obviously still rings true today. Today, ladies and gentlemen, I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the colour of their skin, but by the content of their character. And that is exactly what the Prime Minister and frankly, as far as I'm concerned, his racist cohorts seek to do today. They seek to divide our great nation by race. They seek to judge on the colour of skin. They are essentially saying that people of one particular colour, of one particular ethnicity, are different to others in our nation, are better perhaps, are more important perhaps, that is wrong, and we will not stand for it. As far as I'm concerned, we are all one people and we must, we must speak with one voice, not an Aboriginal voice, not an Asian voice, not an African voice, not a European voice, but ladies and gents, we must speak with an Australian voice. We are all Australians, we are all red, we are all white, and we are all blue. And from whatever land we come, we must reject racism. We must not embed racism into our constitution. Our constitution must be colorblind now and forever. Now, Mr Albanese says that we need a voice to break the tyranny of powerlessness as he believes that Indigenous Australians have no say in matters which affect them. Now, that is utterly absurd. There are 11 Indigenous Australians in the 47th Parliament, 5% of a total, when Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders make up just 3.2% of our population. Now, in the Senate, where I sit, 8, 8, out of 76 senators are indigenous. Now that is more than 10% of the total. Now anybody who says that Australians are racist is simply not paying attention or they have bought into the lie perpetuated by those who would seek to create division in our country. Division in order to control us. Now after all, a divided society, we all know this, a divided society busily fighting amongst each other is much easier to control. Now across state and federal government, we have a total of 26 members of parliament who are indigenous. They are across the entirety of our political spectrum, from the hardest lefty socialist to the middle and to the right. Now there are also hundreds of different Aboriginal groups, each with their own territory, their own individual language, their own culture, and their own belief structure. But here's one thing, here's one thing. How can one single voice represent all these different views? One voice, just one. The answer, it won't. Like so many of our national institutions, from the ABC to the Human Rights Council, it will be captured by green left woke elite. Now, if Mr Albanese really, if he really wants advice from Indigenous Australians, what about this? 
What about asking Indigenous parliamentarians? There are, after all, 26 in total. Or does he only want to listen to a hand-picked few who will tell him exactly what he wants to hear and do exactly what he wants them to do? Now, the idea for The Voice, it comes from the Uluru Statement of the Heart, written by only 250 Indigenous people. Now, that is hardly a democratic mandate. Now, in 2021, the Indigenous Voice co-design process, it proposed that it would have 24 members and the government would be obliged to ask them for advice on anything that affects Indigenous Australians. Which, ladies and gents, when you really think about it, it is absolutely everything. But here is the catch. If Indigenous Australians don't like the members of The Voice, how do they get rid of them? They certainly can't vote them out at the next election. We are potentially at risk of forming an unelected body which has power over all Australians and they will be unelected and most importantly, they will be unaccountable. Now, Mr Albanese is glossing over the fact that the voice is only the first of three demands in the Uluru Statement. The second is a commission to oversee a treaty with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders. And the third is an Orwellian sounding truth telling commission. Now, doesn't that just sound authoritarian and dystopian? Now, what does this all mean? Is part of Australia to be ceded to Indigenous Australians? Is the idea to pay reparations? How much? To whom? Now, we do not know. There is no detail. Now, all we know for sure is that the constitution of our nation will be altered forever to favour one group of people based on the colour of their skin. And at the end of the day, that is all we really need to know in order to vote no to this proposed referendum. Now, one thing that Australians can be certain of is that the United Australia Party will never support a treaty or anything that undermines the sovereignty of Australia or that divides us. We will never support racism in our great nation. Australia, vote no to racism. Vote no to the voice. I'm Senator Ralph Babette for the United Australia Party.